Now I realize and appreciate and totally understand that at 39 years of age doing this video today, that the vast majority of you that are watching this are younger than me. Some just by a year or two, others by a few more years, and others significantly more, probably more in the mid-20s and younger range, even some of you that are teenagers, maybe even preteens. And I realize that with that comes some difference in terms of perspective and some difference from a kind of cultural, generational point of view when it comes to professional wrestling. You know, you sometimes will look at me and say, Angry Man, yells at the clouds! I hate you because I can and I have nothing better to do with my life! I get that. And, and admittedly, sometimes I look at myself and I say, God, get the hell over yourself. Wow, so serious. So, so I get it. Like, sometimes, you know, I've had, admittedly, Trouble adjusting to the times. Sometimes it has felt like, over the past few years especially, that wrestling has kind of passed me by a little bit. Uh, and I don't necessarily think that that is ultimately for the better. Um, and I think this is where me and some of the younger fans would disagree because they don't have the historical context of actually experiencing these things as they were growing up and as they were younger adults. Like, they really don't know the good times of professional wrestling, so it's not necessarily their fault. Like, a lot of the people now that are watching this that are in their teens or early 20s think John Cena is some all-time legend. He's not. They think he's some time of all-time great. He's not. He was a prop. His decade of doom caused significant damage and destruction to the roster, and as a result, the WWE as a whole. When you look at the business and just mainstream recognition and acceptance and overall appeal... It's as low as it's been in a long, 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 long time. It's not by accident. But, you know, also, not everything that worked 20 years ago, 25, 30, 35 years ago, would work now. Totally in agreement there. Totally aligned with that perspective. But, but to me, there are some things that even as the times change, there are certain fundamentals that should still be in play. There are still certain fundamentals that should always matter and be the bedrock and pillar for your foundation of whatever you do. Like you look at basketball. And you talk about the NBA playoffs are going on right now. You got guys who do incredible things in the air. You know, but you still have to be able to drill. You still are taught how to do the old two-handed bounce chest pass, you know, bounce pass. You have to do all of these different drills. You still have a certain baseline of fundamentals, you know, so when these guys finally get to the NBA and they realize, oh, they don't call traveling here anymore. Instead of taking two steps, I can take four. They still have a solid fundamental base foundation that they could draw from. The ability to use both hands. Um, you know, I could go on and on and on. But even as the game of basketball has shifted away from being a big man's post game to more of a free flowing, open, three point perimeter type of game dominated by the wings and point guards, there are still certain fundamentals that hold true. And what really concerns me about professional wrestling is there has been a basic fundamental breakdown in some of the key fundamentals which I think not only has led to some disastrous results from an overall business standpoint, but perhaps just as importantly, if not more so, has created a very dangerous work environment for so many people in professional wrestling today. And to me, I'm just sick and tired of every time you turn on a match, it feels like well, it doesn't matter the company, doesn't matter who, you got all these idiots doing all these ridiculous, uncouth spots for what? There's no build-up to your match, but you got to get your shit in. You got to sit there and bump around and crash test dummy your ass through and try to kill your body and over to get over because you don't know how to actually get over in a meaningful, deep way that will really connect you with the audience in a way that will last. 
Think you look at what's happened in the past week in wrestling. You look at Saturday at AEW All Out. Now, I realize in part that Matt Hardy was part of a tag team with his brother over the years that was known for doing really crazy, stupid, ridiculous things with their body that at times put them at tremendous physical risk. And that was part of the game at the time. But, you know, they, that was also a part of their act. But it wasn't necessarily like every single damn body in the business did that. They were also a great tag team. And they still, in their own ways, had their own characters and their own personalities. Like, you, you could forget about just how much star power and appeal, specifically, uh, not just the Hardys as a team, but Jeff, especially, even as a tag team guy and then as a singles guy, actually had. Like, it's easy to forget about that stuff where that was a part of the deal and a part of the thing, you know, it wasn't absolutely everything. But they're watching All Out on Saturday night. Like, it's bad enough. You've got this kind of falls count anywhere, broken rules match between him and Sammy Guevara. We're already earlier on in the program. Sammy Guevara apparently used the wrong chair or something to bust it up Matt Hardy to kingdom freaking hell. Now you got this, and now we throw on the needless stipulation that you didn't fucking need. Matt Hardy, if I lose, I'll leave AEW. Like, that's an entirely different topic for an entirely another video. All these pointless random stipulations get thrown out where these matches and programs don't have nearly the buildup to justify them and support them. And as a result, they ultimately usually end up queefing all over the place. But here you are, this broken rules match where Hardy loses, his career in AEW is over. And it could have been, what, more than four or five minutes into the damn match. And here are these two idiots going up there, him and Guevara going on top of whatever it was, a scissor lift or whatever. Sit there and they do this stupid spot where they're going to land onto the table. Where the table is right there in, in the, the guts of Jacksonville Stadium. And they're just going to do this bump like Guevara's going to come through and run into Jeff Hardy and they're going to land on the table. Like, why would we do that so early in the match? Why did we think that spot was necessary there? Why did we think that spot was necessary at all? If anything even remotely goes wrong there, you're talking about Onto the concrete. And that's exactly what the hell happened. You know, Matt Hardy could have really been seriously hurt there. And frankly, so could Sammy Guevara. They both could have been seriously hurt there. And for what? Why? For one pay-per-view match? It isn't that serious. Like, you've already built up a program that has this type of heat. And this type of of animosity that you could play off of, I could potentially justify doing some type of spot like this, but look at the spot that when Matt Hardy shaking off the concussion that he didn't have, even though everybody with a goddamn brain knows that he does. You go back up there, you climb on the scaffold, and then Sammy Guevara falls, gets pushed off, and he falls into the padded safe area. Like, that's the type of high-risk spot that can still matter, still looks good. Nobody's going to call a puss-ass for doing that fall. And you can still accomplish everything you need to do without taking the recklessly ridiculous chances that you did for no damn good reason. You just see this time after time in matches. These guys are getting you doing moves on the ring aprons in matches that have no build-up to them, that aren't for a title, have no major stipulation. What the fuck are you doing? Everybody's sitting there doing the same goddamn flips all the while, in order to pull this off, you'll have to sit there 10, 15 people standing around looking like freaking zombies. <laughs> just waiting for the guy. Like, it just looks like shit. Then you look at what happened with Ivar on Monday Night on Raw. Here's this fat ass. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I'm just saying, like, Jesus Christ. Everybody, big, small, super heavyweight, cruiserweight, is doing the same type of suicide damn diving off the freaking ropes or through the ropes. Like, that's a move that seriously injured people. I'm pretty sure it's a move that's killed people before. Why the hell are you doing this in some screw-off all eight-man tag match on Raw? 
No wonder he got hurt. And I'm not wishing ill on him. I'm not. But damn it, this is where you need to have a bit of judgment and a bit of good sense. There's a risk and reward factor. If you're going to take an increased level of risk, there should be some type of increased level of reward. And doing dumb spots to what, what Guevara and Hardy does at freaking All Out is not it. That risk is not worth the reward, especially that early in the match. It's just dumb on so many different levels. And then Ivar, what he did on Monday, dumb. What the fuck are you doing? It just comes down to the whole thing of, you know, who was it? Was it uh, Jordan Grace, her dumbass, sat there and tweeted a while back, months ago, if I remember correctly, talking about wrestling as a performance art. Not anymore, it's not. And when you look at some of the guys that are on the wall back here, that's performance art. Where everybody knows it's fake. But you get so emotionally invested to where you either suspend your disbelief or do not care because it sucks you in so much to where you think these guys are legitimately killing themselves and they're barely doing anything to each other. That's the art. That's the performance art. It's not sitting there and actually legitimately hurting yourselves and each other for even less money because you don't know how to get hell over as characters, as talkers, as performers, as personalities. We need to cut out doing all these ridiculous spots and matches all the damn time. It's the young bucks influence, and so they are certainly not the only ones. And you could say, well, you had guys like Foley and all these other guys. Yeah, you know, but they were more of a rare thing back in the day. And it's, they stood out more because they went to a whole different level. You don't need an entire show full of everybody doing the same damn thing. When it comes to wrestling variety, the spice of life. And there is no spice of life anymore because you got Ivar doing the same time, same type of move that you would see a Finn Balor do. That doesn't make Finn Balor look cool, and it certainly doesn't look make Ivar look cool. It makes them both look the same, even with the notable size difference. There's nothing different. Because what happened was you got all these people that were marks, they got into the business and instead of learning from those that actually made big money in the business, that actually learned how to become performers and characters and personality, learned how to talk, learned how to tell a story, these guys ain't got time for that. They just sat there and said, the easiest way for me to get there, I could either hit the gym and work on my craft, or I can just learn how to do a bunch of somersaults and tumbling and karate and that'll get me the cheap pops that I so easily live for in this instant gratification society that we're in today. And then that's where we're at. Is nobody can let anything fester or simmer anymore. Nobody can actually allow a story to play out. Like a guy like Ivar 20 years ago should have been the type of dude that he could have had the whole building roar because he hit somebody with a damn body slam. Ain't no way in hell you could do that now. And the reason you can't is because guys don't know how to do that anymore. We need to get away from all these ridiculous high-risk spots that aren't drawing more eyeballs in, that aren't making people more money, that are creating greater risks of injury and danger, making everybody feel more of the same, just all in all, just ding dong dunk it, stop doing them! At certain key moments and points in time, to put the bow on a story, to emphasize a story, to have a signature moment, sure, certainly, understand. Again though, risk worth reward. Random F off eight man tag matches, on Dynamite or Raw is certainly not the damn place to be doing it. And you see this time after time after time. Guys diving into the barrier from outside of the ring, the suicide dive. I'm going to hit you with this move on the damn ring apron on the outside. What the hell are you doing? You're not legitimately hurting people and yourselves, and you're looking faker than you ever have. 
Instead of doing these ridiculous ass moves, how about people in the business actually learn how to be performance artists, learn how to be characters, learn how to talk, and learn how to tell some damn stories. Stop being lazy.